come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest to take over the world. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What the? I mean, this kind of ties into tonight's movie. I mean, Sean. (laughs) I don't know why. I don't know why. (laughs) Wait, who are you? Michaela. That's sure. Michaela. Yes, I'm okay. sure. She's sure. Well, and let I'm, me see if I can pull I'm it. very confused. <laughs> my skin feels a little I was going to say, yeah, you pull yeah. that off. That's yeah. going to be me, and I'm going to be Michaela. <laughs> All right, and I'm, I know I'm Colin, and tonight we're I know <laughs> we watched a movie that was chosen by... Michaela. You sure? I think that's what I was, <laughs> that's what I was gearing up for. Because, again, it's always the person that's in the chair. I think that's the problem. Michaela, what did we watch tonight for your birthday? Happy birthday to me. Oh, Yay! Happy birthday. From the year 1981. Ooh, okay. Directed by. Uh, hold on. Oh, hold mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, Jay Lee Thompson. Jay Lee Thompson. No. Oh, he is a freak show hall of famer. Oh, if I were. oh boy. Uh, well, oh boy. He before he collaborated with Canon on 12 films, he <laughs> was a legitimate director. He directed the original. All, did you pick all 12? <laughs> Mo- like half. <laughs> like half. Yeah. Uh, he was the director of the original Cape Fear. Yeah, oh, along okay. with like okay. the guns of Navarone guns and a of bunch Navarone. of dudes directed like forty five movies. He's been a director yeah. since sure, the nineteen sure. fifties. Yep. Uh, oh wow. A few mm-hmm. That I'd, I'd like to say nineteen fifty fives an alligator named Daisy. I saw I that and I was like, <laughs> I'm intrigued. I I'm just interested. Want to bring that up. Yeah, like, like yeah you my said, attention. Ten to midnight. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that uh, uh, you just little... glossed over. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we I'm need to pump the brakes here. He directed the legendary, the legendary ten to midnight. He directed a few Charles Bronson movies. He did Death Wish for the Crackdown. Right. But he was Charles Bronson's favorite. Direct. Yes. yes, we have a special yeah. affinity for Ten to Midnight. Yeah, yes. we really um, do. It's uh, we covered it on the yeah, show. Yeah, it listen was to that a episode. surprising. Uh, yeah, episode. he's done a lot for many uh, d- many different decades. Mm-hmm. Two like Planet of the Apes, Apes movies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a conquest and battle for Planet yes. of the Apes. Yeah. Firewalker <laughs> Murphy's Law. King yeah, Solomon's Firewalker's Mines. been on my list for a while. It's like a Chuck Norris like Indiana yeah. Jones type movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did King Solomon's Mines with yes. Richard Chamberlain. And that was the first movie I ever saw uh, Sharon Stone in. Okay. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, hmm. yes. The dude's legit. Deadly blessing before that, but I, I, right. sorry. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Jay Lee Thompson, mm-hmm. right? Yes, a British director. I did not know that. So he's. Time. So I mean, this is like, it's interesting, I guess, because this guy who had done a lot of. Well, I mean, I guess like Richard Fleischer was doing, you know, Amityville 3D and right. stuff like that, you know, and he had done Fantastic Voyage and all this stuff. So you have like. But this is like coming from the genre of the slasher film, mm-hmm. right? In the sweet spot of the slasher film in the 80s. Anyway. We should say who this movie was produced by. It was produced by John Dunning and Andre Link, who you may know from My Bloody Valentine, oh. their same year. So, okay. same okay. Okay. so this right. movie was actually shot first and wrapped, and then they shot My Bloody Valentine, I think we talked about it on the previous episode, on a very short timeline to make the Valentine's Day deadline. Oh. So even though this one was shot first, My Bloody Valentine came out first. But oh, they back-to-back gotcha. back did those movies. So yeah. I, yeah, so I they can... worked on all the kinks in this one mm-hmm. and then yeah. made a good movie. I, I can see that being a double feature. I wonder, yeah, probably. You know, you hear those stories about like Disney in the '90s, where like this animation studios would be split up, and everyone would be like, "God, I want to be on Pocahontas. That's going to be the one that like wins Oscars and shit." And nobody wanted to work on The Lion King. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then it, in, re- in reality, The Lion King was a much bigger hit, much more well received. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's probably what was happening with My sure, Bloody Valentine sure. in this movie. It's like this was the prestige one. I think they backed the wrong horse a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah I mean, it's got you know. I mean, we were even saying when we were watching it, like it's it's really well produced like mm-hmm. this is classic hollywood you know craftsmanship yeah. going into good camera work and the cinematography is mm-hmm. good it didn't yeah. feel cheap no, no. You know? three million no. dollar budget yeah oh, it, oh in 1981 yeah. yeah. wow so and the effects expensive yeah, yeah effects are good yeah, yeah, yeah and it's a canadian movie it is. Uh, god bless them yep. oh that's right because the producers yep. they also My did Bloody uh, Valentine. and uh meatballs and, and john dunning did <laughs> uh tourist trap 
Oh, okay. Yep. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Which of these doesn't belong? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Meatballs. This movie. <laughs> I feel like we moved on from Tourist Trap too fast as like a oh, that society. Was a wild one. <laughs> yeah. Like I, that Probably. mannequin orgy will never leave my yeah, mind. Yeah. 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 The, the classic Chuck Connors movie. We did that one too. Yeah. On show. But didn't yeah. we do that like the first week of COVID? I think, I think that was, was one of the first, first ones we watched at home. I know. Yeah. Because oh, I remember yeah. doing it from a basement. Yeah. Not this one. Yeah. Because <laughs> Toby watched it with me and was like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, <laughs> I'm due for a, re- a legitimate rewatch of yeah. Tourist yeah. Trap. Yeah. Just go watch, uh, you know, House of Wax 2005. I, I mean, I'll watch both. Why not both? There you you know? Back to back. Mm-hmm. So is uh, my or Happy Birthday to Me a slasher movie? Yes. Mm, yes. Yes, but like barely. Like it's hitting the bare minimum weird one. check marks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I ask that is- We got Black Lives. Uh, we got Straight Razor. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. it a, is it an American Jalo movie? No. It might be closer to that than a slasher. I would say just as, especially the weirdness factor yep. that you usually find yeah, in a Jalo actually, movie yep. is present in this movie. <laughs> actually, I take that back because there was parts that reminded me of I Know Who Killed Me I, yeah. in this movie. And I was like, yeah. the guy who wrote I Know Who Killed Me has definitely seen Happy Birthday mm. to Me. Like mm-hmm. some of the twists in the third act felt very reminiscent of that movie. Michaela's like, when you say Jalo, Michaela's like, I know who killed me. Yeah, like nothing else. Yeah, like that's the I one we identified that it's one as American like Giallo, that's yeah. an American Giallo. Yeah, yeah. Movie. Uh, there's several of them. I think yeah. we've covered them all. But <laughs> Alice, slowly but Alice yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. uh, Dressed to Kill, we said. Mm-hmm. But this one, yeah, I don't know. It, um, it does have that kind of Giallo bonkers yes. mm-hmm. weirdness. Yes, and they're always taking place in a school or some weird shit too, like yeah, this. Yeah. You know, like this yeah. just happens to have uh, that that whole um kind of 80s american uh, it's a really good combo of it because it's got that 80s, 80s american slasher version of it where you know uh you, the bodies collect at the end and there's this whole thing which usually doesn't happen in, in a giallo right quite like this right this feels That's like it's got that american movie. injection yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. copyright 2024 2024 yeah. <laughs> saturday freak show american injection did we establish like is like the the slasher movie is it like the second most american like Aside from genre, the western, aside from the western, oh yeah, probably. Yeah. I bet, yeah. yeah. I, but who knows if you ask that to normies outside of us because we're not normal. If they, if if that would hit, maybe film people would say that. I don't yeah. know. It's, but it's hard to say. Era, I mean, I don't I know, know if the respect of... is there for the slasher genre that oh, I think is there for right. the western. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. there should be. I'm just saying it seems is. like, and maybe I don't know because they, you know, uh, there's so much of a debt. You know, given to the Jalo in the in the American mm. uh, slasher movie, but it, it, we I think we identified there's only like three non-American slasher movies, right? There were the yeah. two, uh, Slaughter High. yeah, yeah Slaughter, Slaughter High, High and yep. Don't Open Till Christmas yep. uh, and Stage Fright, the yep. Italian one. I think are like those mm-hmm. are those that, those are slasher movies, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Where I think there's always like you know who the killer is in a slasher movie, don't you? Mm, not always. Not, well, not always, but I mean, if you think of like the big ones, I mean, if you're talking about Slaughter High, like we know it's um, yeah. Marty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, usually. But is yeah. that the differenti- dif- differentiation, or at least you have some kind of figurehead who's masked, who you see on camera. Mm-hmm. This one, you don't see who's doing the killings. Mm. They're represented by black gloves and a, mm-hmm. and a straight razor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's the, that kind of whodunit aspect of like, okay, who's the killer? And this movie has so many fucking red herrings that oh I defy you to see this ending coming. <laughs> red herrings everywhere. Guess <laughs> yeah. I mean, Not even possible. the shots were like there was a shot of like two people talking, and they walked off the shot, and the shot like zoomed in just a little bit on the trees behind them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? And then it cuts, and you're mm-hmm. like, what? Was somebody there? It was just mm-hmm. the they implied it right like, in a mm-hmm. half second. Yeah. Like, oh, be on the lookout for. Mm-hmm. Um, Melissa Sue Anderson mm-hmm. is the star of this movie. Mary Ingalls. Yeah. Whole House on the Prairie. Did you watch that show? Like uh, here and there, like Nick and Knight reruns yeah, you, and shit. You, you, yeah. You, you, you absorb uh, it. If you're up, so yeah. If you're up a certain era, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you catch a stray every yeah. now and again yeah. where you just see an episode, but not mm-hmm. too many though. Yeah. I remember. Michael Landon, that one blonde yeah. bitch that was real mean. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Laura, Laura yeah. Ingalls, why? But I remember the episode where Mary like went blind. Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember <laughs> and, that event. Now yeah. you're jogging a memory for me. That was <laughs> yeah. Yeah, famous. That yeah, it was, was like famous. a national event, huh? Yeah, yeah. TV Guide ranked that as number seven on the 100 uh, 
greatest TV episodes of all time. Whoa, okay. Because yeah, it right. traumatized. I saw that as a kid. Because oh. I would watched that show. And then, Why does know, she go it, blind? It's something like is like she get kicked by a horse or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's usually what happens. Yeah, I remember what it was. It feels like it was some kind of fever or something. Uh, oh, she, fever? she caught the fever. Scarlet fever. It might have been. I don't recall. I know it's a historical thing. It's based on true, <laughs> sure. true events and. Um, but yeah, so then, right, I think that show ended in the early 80s, right? Yeah, I couldn't tell you when it, it might have been some overlap with this. And so that she was like, uh, well, maybe not the biggest get for this movie, but she was a big get. Audiences at the time would have known her from Little House on the Prairie. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? Who would be the other good get for this movie, do you think? Glenn Ford. I would yeah. say Glenn Ford. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever seen the original 310 to Yuma, which mm-hmm. he's great in, mm-hmm. and this, he's done a, he, I mean, he had a, a pretty long career and he did a bunch of noir movies back in the day as well. Mm-hmm. He's a good actor for that. And for he that was time. the original Jonathan Kent in uh, Superman, right. mm-hmm. the movie. But this is like a, a thing that, that um, slasher movies always seem to have, right? They have the elder statesman, mm-hmm. some actor that they... Usually now it's the person that, you know, when you have to go explain something, you call up this person right. who experienced the trauma 20 years ago, and they're able to fill you in on, right. like, you know, a little bit of the backstory, right. but... I've always tried or the, to or they're brought out. in as the therapist. They're always brought in as yes. the therapist. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. uh, for some reason, I keep thinking Henry Zerny from Scream 6. Mm-hmm. Oh, like okay. That it would be the most modern equivalent of it, I think. Yeah. But uh, the trend had to start somewhere that, like, we're going to always bring right. in, like, this big former Hollywood heavy hitter, and they're going to appear in just a cameo. Because, like, Faye Dunaway was in with that one with Ryan Philippe. Was it? Uh, um, Oh god, wish upon was it wish upon? Was she in that? Yeah, like she was still the, working. The newer one? Yeah, oh my good. Oh my yeah, because when I saw her, I was like, "Fake Dunaway's the alive." Fuck is yeah. Faye Dunaway doing in this movie? Yeah, she was Lady, the one who was like, "I'm rest. sorry, Ernesto." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so they still do it, but I was like, "Is it Gregory Peck in the Omen, oh, or yeah. is it yeah. uh, Betty Davis in uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane?" Baby Jane. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. she's still acting and shit. Yeah. She was in the Bye Bye Man. Oh, oh, maybe, what? Wait, was it that? That's really embarrassing. Maybe that's what I'm thinking oh, of. No. That's no. really bad. That's, that's, yeah. like, that's elder abuse. Like yeah. You can't do that. I know, because I bad. saw it, and then I was like, what is she doing? I yeah. think maybe that was it. That's she's not in Wish Upon okay. then? Uh, I don't, it was no, Bye Bye Man. But they like even it. brought back, what's her name for The Exorcist? I feel like Bye Bye Man might be worse than Wish Upon. Ellen Burstyn. Yeah, yeah, Um. All right, and so like- Bye Bye Man. Is worse. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, I was like, yeah. that's worse You're than right. Chappelle. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. But wow. I haven't seen either movie, so I can't say. Oh, there you <laughs> go. There you, yeah. Um, so, what is this movie? A boot. Oh, okay. I'm. S- I didn't know I was setting us up for homework tonight, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is like I'm going to need help untangling this because we, I don't know no, that I yeah. grasped even half of what happened. I didn't either, <laughs> but I've seen it now at least a second time. So okay. now I'm like, oh, okay. Good. I'm glad you'll be here to guide us because okay. the rest of us have never I seen I this before. <laughs> yeah, this I, think, I, I think I have a I have, well, I have a thought process. Basically, uh, I, I didn't have it until we got to the very end of yeah. this movie. But now I'm just like, okay, 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 okay. So are we gonna are we gonna lay it out and then get to the shocking reveal, or are we going to have to talk about the shocking reveal? I think we lay it out and talk about the shocking reveal uh, later. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think yep. we can lay it out first. I think we can lay it out. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Whew. Everyone's weird. I don't remember how this movie starts. We are at a college. Bernadette okay. and Bernadette. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bernadette yeah. is uh, tripped by oh, a dog, a dog leash. leash. Tangled yes. by a dog leash. Yes. This is amazing because uh-huh. it seems to whip out of the darkness. I thought and Indiana Jones was attacking her. It, yes. Yeah. I thought it was like a venom tentacle, like the way it like <laughs> shot yeah. out and the yeah. sound effects that they put on it. They really went for it with the editing. On yes, this. they yeah. did. And we were like, "What venom. the fuck?" <laughs> and then there's a bulldog, and we're like. Oh, and Sean's like, I think that maybe the bulldog got loose. Right, and, and you know, you get that, that whipping motion if the dog just goes one way and then comes back the other. And whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. It's not yeah. cut like that. Nope. This is no. intuition that we have. Yep. That this is what happened. Otherwise, oh, I'm I'm looking at nefarious actions by the lady. Yeah, who's like, just like fuck her up, dog, and mm-hmm. then maybe like threw the leash at mm-hmm. her as she was running by. Also yeah. a possibility. This but. is the headmistress. What sure. do they actually call them? Not a headmistress. Of a college. She's British. The we'll dean? go with headmistress. She's the dean. 
I don't think she's given a title, but she okay. is in well, charge. This is, I mean, and this is she's umbrage. This is a prep school. This isn't a college. Okay, so yeah. She would be the which keep that in mind because yeah. some things don't make sense. Yeah. But uh, by yeah. the by, yeah, it's, it's very Canadian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's uh, <laughs> didn't we always also have these questions in like curtains or something? Prep school versus college. Yeah, based on the I tu- think so. The, the tutor uh, estate. The finishing school. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. Finishing yeah. School. yeah. Like in England, a college <laughs> is a prep school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, this is Canada. Yeah. So it's, just, it's prep school. <laughs> just okay. like England. Yeah. All right. And they all wear a distinctive. Uh, because there's a specific line where she says, if you buckle down, you could get into Harvard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and so Bernadette is the first person that we meet, a student at this school. And after her encounter with the uh, disciplinarian headmistress, she is attacked in her car and nearly strangled to death by a black gloved killer. And this goes on for a while. And eventually yep. she is murdered. Uh, how she gets out of the car, runs like 10 feet away, stops mm-hmm. as Colin, you pointed out, she should have run a little farther. Cause, mm-hmm. uh, and then gets, uh, like we see the black glove and the razor straight razor. And she's like surprised by who's holding it. And then just mm-hmm. cuts her throat. Yeah. Okay. She runs back into them later. First of all, mm-hmm. like, uh, maybe good for the movie because we do get the scene where she is attacked in the car, strangled, yeah. and we think she's dead. Mm-hmm. But then she's just like, <gasps> and fucking runs off, mm-hmm. which is good on her part. But yeah. then she does uh, end up trying to run away and then runs into someone who she recognizes. Okay. So I just want to put a pin in this one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because now that you have finished the movie, mm-hmm. yes. we're going to come back to the motive on this one mm-hmm. because okay. I don't have it. Okay, so okay. then <laughs> Okay, so Bernadette. Put a okay, pin in Bernadette. So, Bernadette. Mm-hmm. so now we meet the cast of the movie. And who are they? Ooh, okay, there's a guy named Alfred. A guy named Alfred who reminds me of He's got Keith Gordon energy. Yep. Yes. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Yes. Yeah, because I'm like Keith Gordon. First first of all, he's dressed like he is in Jaws too, mm-hmm. but then I'm just like, Oh yeah, he looks just like Keith Gordon from, you know, Christine and, and right. shit. So yes, very much so. Yeah. For sure. And then what's what's the we blonde got, guy's name? The st- foreign exchange yeah. student from yeah. Canada? Or I was from like, France? which blonde guy? Yeah. Francois? Yeah. The yep. French one or the one with the glorious hair? He's the BMXer. Yeah, yes. the other guy's got the glorious blonde. Yeah, like glorious, he's, yeah glorious he's, hair. He's great. I know we he he kind of had like William Zapka vibes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Very much. Yeah, he's yeah. working out and everything later on. I want to say uh, there's 10 people here. Jesus. We have Matt the- Craven, uh, who, <laughs> who looks like Horshack. Who yeah. I always confuse, but so it's much not like Horshack. Horshack. It's, it's Matt Craven. Yeah. This is like his first movie or something. He's very know, young. Before he he's went also to... the um, the uh, poster image uh, it, of really? this movie. I thought well, it I was don't the dark... Okay. I thought it was the dark-haired guy this whole time. Yeah, I don't think it's the same like actor. I don't, I don't think, think it is either. Yeah. Well, the, the movie's poster, I guess we should talk about. Yes. Ty- infamous. Iconic, uh, yeah. Infamous to me. It's, it's uh, a guy with wide eyes and open mouth, and he's getting a shish kebab shoved in his mm-hmm. mouth. Yeah, yeah, there we be. Yeah, and it, well, like, yeah. it looks like the it dark is, hair it guy. It is the other guy. I've seen it this like in the grocery store, like VHS yes. rental sections, yeah. like so many times. Many, like, many I've times. always been curious about this poster, and that's what you put on a poster to get people interested. Yeah, yeah. A full yeah. a fully loaded shish kebab yep. going into someone's face. Yep. Six mm-hmm. of the most bizarre murders you will ever see. It's no shit. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I um, agree. So we we've we're introduced to the they're like the um, not the top ten what were they called yeah they were the top, top ten the top yeah. ten so yeah. these top are ten the of Crawford mm-hmm. yeah and not like the top ten students like the top ten richest kids yes, yes. this isn't like, like a literally. GPA thing that no is, yeah. The, yeah it's the, literally the, the richest kids in the school yeah okay. and that is a theme that will carry mm-hmm. on to no. the very end of this movie <laughs> they weren't like the also like best uh, performing no, students too I it was don't just they were the they formed their own. Yeah, Play. no, because she specifically says, like, if you kids would buckle down more. Yeah. Instead of going yeah. to that in. Yeah. They got in because they're rich versus yep. any yeah. other reason. These are all Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman's kids. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> yeah. Skipping yeah, the line are. to get into college. Yeah. That's exactly what is happening <laughs> yeah. here. Mm-hmm. That is a great connection. <laughs> now now I don't feel bad for anybody. No, this movie none of them. It that way. Fuck them. Put, you know put the parents in jail. The headmistress is the hero of this movie, she I would is. say. She that bitch is. had her number from day one. You, need, you mean uh, Dame Bowie Dench? Yes. That's what I'm going to call her. Amazing. See, this says that you have crossed the circle line in your maturity when you start to oh, identify yeah. with the disciplinary yes. characters like we're supposed to rail again you know from yeah. the teens per- but i'm like even right. you get that, you get there with age or parenthood yeah, yeah. that's uh-huh. how you get into yep. that category mm-hmm. and they're terrorizing the shriners or whatever at these the kids are assholes. like these kids are a menace to this entire town like mm-hmm. yeah and- i mean 
the Shriners, what do they do? They're, they're old guys. They're singing 100 uh, bottles they're of beer in a wall. In this, uh, this bar is called The Silent Woman, which yeah. is interesting because yeah. there's a real bar in California that's very well known called The Quiet Woman. So, oh. yeah. Um, but I love there's that the sign. yeah the, the, the logo is like a medieval like wood like pub I, sign. Every bar. If yeah. you want me to go to your bar, you need one of those like signs. A swing, yeah. Like, I, that yeah, it's a headless me. woman. Like, I see that. Oh, I'm yeah. going there. Yeah. Like, that pub is haunted and I'm in. So yes. Those guys were willing. Yeah, I mean, it's made of rich mahogany and stuff. Even yes. though there was a slight, they were offering to buy the teens like a round of beers. This is they where were, the kids fuck were, up. But they're, yeah. but they're a bunch of rich kids and they don't give a fuck. Mm. The money yeah. has no value to them. So they're like, well, it doesn't matter anyways. Yeah, we can buy yeah. our own drinks. We just came here to fuck with you. Yeah. With yeah. a rat. We're, we're, they see the the bar tab as like a permission slip to do whatever the fuck they want in the mm. place. They're like, we're not really here to drink. We're here to fuck with you. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so, it's okay because we give the bar a lot of money. Yeah. So, yeah. And this becomes like a running theme. Like the they, government. They, they play games on everybody. They fuck with everybody like the whole way through. They're like not likable protagonists. Not particularly. No. No. no the kids in um, Pumpkinhead that ran over the kid on the dirt bike were more likable <laughs> than the kids. <laughs> <laughs> they at least thought about doing the right thing for a second before they didn't, but... <laughs> Well, there's a scene that could be considered an inciting incident, but we just don't know it at the time. But it is like a fairly big uh, centerpiece action sequence. Yeah. What do these kids do for fun? Oh, boy. So there's a uh, drawbridge. Yep. Um, they, where mm-hmm. that like boat, like barges and boats come through and yeah. they, did they say how they decided who went in what order? Was it just the one guy deciding? Because he mm. was pointing at them and being like, one, two, three, four, like. Giving them their yeah, they, yeah, I they decided I based on who said yes or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you want to be the first one to go because it's the lowest. So mm-hmm. like, I guess the person uh, you're hazing gets the last number because yeah. it'll be the highest. Uh, yeah, and so they're gonna drive their cars and motorcycles over this drawbridge as it's lifting up. Yep. And I don't as as people that live in and near Chicago. It's like too real because you always yeah. see those videos of the people that don't listen to when the sidewalks yep. are going up in Chicago and they're like clinging to the railing. And it's like, yeah, you, the it signal is, goes off yeah. for like 10 minutes before it goes up. You've really <laughs> fucked this up. You know, that's why they think they can go. Yeah, exactly. It's like 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. Little did they know they were nine minutes and 45 seconds in when they yes. decided to cross this bridge. Walk faster. No. <laughs> um, and so they race their cars over the bridge as the gap is getting wider and wider. And one guy chickens out. I don't remember who it was. I think it was Francois. Okay. Could be wrong. No, maybe it was the other blind guy. No, the other blind guy is the one who goes over the oh, bridge. Yeah. He's in the Firebird, Rudy, the Trans Am. It? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's... Is it Rudy? Rudy uh, yeah. Rudy's somebody. One of them. <laughs> but, so then, <laughs> yeah, the, but the, yes, motorcycle ma- yeah. the motorcycle makes the most sense here, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that sure. guy oh, I'm yeah, not totally. worried about. Everyone else, I'm like... Yeah. No, <laughs> the guy in the Trans Am, which also happens to have our main... Um, Actress, I already forgot her name. What's her name? Um, Ginny. Virginia. 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 Ginny, who has Ginny in it, and this is the one that like decides to to jump the thing when it's all pretty much all the way up. Yeah. yeah. Like it it it, it should have oh, fucked Matt up the Craven car. Matt Craven didn't go over. Matt He's Craven like, didn't go over. It's too high. Right, Matt yeah. Craven didn't go over. But this one in the blue uh, Trans Am decides to go over and mm-hmm. really hits that front bump. But once it goes over. Like ass over tea kettle almost in this, and he wrecks the front end of his car and slides like front end yeah. perpendicular to the pavement. It yeah. looked painful. Like it really did. I was legitimately concerned, but because yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, uh, and I think was it Ginny and her friend Anne were in that. No, because her friend Anne was mm-hmm. drove it by herself, right? She was I in a car so. I think so, because she looked back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they made it. <laughs> the one guy who was like, oh, they made it. <laughs> yeah. But there's a part where the door comes open. And she's like hanging out the door. Yeah, but when they're like oh, trying to I write themselves. I think she, she's trying to escape. Jenny's it trying yeah, to get okay. out. Yeah, yeah. but because she like, does, and then runs off into yeah, the woods. But she's not wearing a seatbelt because it's too many people in this two seater car. Yeah. So that's and what makes it extra. 80s. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's the 80s. So she immediately runs to through the woods and mm-hmm. to her mother's grave. Yep. like you do. Where you go and trims the. She's got some hedge clippers there. Mm-hmm. And she trims it and then she's followed home by I think it is Francois. She goes mm-hmm. to this giant man. Mm -hmm. that she shares with her father Mm -hmm. right and uh there's a big suspense sequence because uh we see uh i'm gonna call him francois but that's all i got and he sneaks into her room 
and apparently steals her underwear and takes back off again. Mm-hmm. He uses this as a good luck charm for a BMX race that he's going to do yeah, but the yes. next day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think we should say he's very menacing, mm-hmm. which is going to be a theme as we keep going in this. Because mm-hmm. everyone is like because this. Because everyone <laughs> is very menacing. <laughs> They're also, I guess, uh, the romantic relationships yeah in this movie i could not real fluid onto. real fluid real loose yeah yeah it i can't i need red string for this you know yeah like, no i would to, to sit here and try and figure out who ends up with who or who was with who is uh, it I'd just like, seems like they are constantly it's like you know tonight you know i'm with so-and-so and yeah. then the following night no i'm with so-and-so tonight and it's never addressed like it's well, just there's mm-hmm. fights it's the new that, reality that happen yeah the jealousies yeah. i yeah. think a, but, a couple here and there they don't last too long or they end up being the jealousies turn into like well, i'll just go very with her unclear and, very confusing yes yeah. Yeah. it's uh, like a lot of messy plotting in the movie yeah. Yes. yeah yeah um so Virginia, mm-hmm. um, Virginia also sees a psychiatrist. Dave. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dr. Glenn Ford. Dave. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave. That's all we know. All Dr. We know Dave is David, yeah. the famous Who, Glenn like, Ford. Does it feel like they're setting him up to be a Loomis and then it just kind of doesn't go yeah. anywhere? Yeah. That's what it what feels that, like. That was a very weird relationship. Yeah. It felt too uh, familiar. I felt like he was supposed, he should have, at least in the way I interpret slasher language, to have had all the knowledge of right. everything that is wrong with her, right? But the weird but thing is. But he doesn't seem to know anything. But he knows about a medical procedure, which becomes like part of the backstory of this character, yeah. Yeah. but he's not the doctor who performed it. No, he's just been her therapist, I think, since the accident. Okay. Since so then we've the, established. The, the it, accent that we keep that we're vaguely referred to every now and again, yeah. Which every time she experiences a trauma, we get a little more picture of it, okay. And, we, and they talk about that in the movie as it's happening because mm-hmm. I mean, apparently, and she believes that she was a guinea pig in has been experimented on in some kind of new mm-hmm. medical field technique, right? Yeah, and Doctor David confirms you were, but it was successful, <laughs> right? Yeah, in and your then case, we, right? And even we get a flashback with a British doctor who kind of explains it's a it's a new technique, and you know they're doing that. That was totally that's on French, but it's appropriate because it's a Canadian movie. I'll go with it. So there's this. Okay, so the past. Exp- uh, so we know there's been an accident. Yes, we know. Obviously, mom's not in the picture. Yep. Mm-hmm. We know that's uh, so much in the picture. The the um because there's a scene where they have to like dissect frog. I don't know. They're applying electrodes to frog legs and yes. bringing them. So we're like, okay, what that's foreshadowing to the condition or the the technique that we're talking about. Nerves are being regenerated. This has no or- payoff. I hate this. Take this scene out of the movie right now. Just mm-hmm. the frog legs. Yeah, just the frog legs. Right. If you apply electricity to pretty much anything, it's going to move. Right. Like, it's like if you touch the nerve. Well, if you touch it up here, it'd do the same thing. Yeah. Like, just- but like, wh- what does this, what insight does this provide I think it, us? The with? only connection is the electricity to the flashback where it triggers her memory of something happening to her. Brain right. It's to give her a flashback. Right. But like, mm-hmm. that's it. It's a prolonged setup for yeah, a flashback. Because it's you know? also explained to us by Glenn Ford, and like, okay, you're doing two scenes to basically cover the same ground, right? Right. Because mm-hmm. then yep. Glenn Ford has to be like, well, the doctor who worked on you came up with this technique using electricity where he could actually, you know, create a field around the and that's done so much and, faster than and how this regrow your brain it, and yeah. regrow your brain, yeah. and then we get a scene. Of the brain surgery, which Ooh. is it's gross, fantastic. Gross. Yeah, and there's some gross. really yeah. good effects work right yeah. where we were this is the money, audibly. Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So when I look, I had never seen this movie before, so when I looked at the IMDb, you know, how it's like the parental ratings, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And so like Severe. it said for sex and nudity, it said none, and I was like, that's weird. It's a slasher movie, and then yeah, the gore and like graphic violence, it said like severe to extreme, and yeah. I was like, yeah, <laughs> it is. It, it like this scene alone would. It's, it's gross. towing the line, yeah. for a especially the the narration from the doc. She's dead. <laughs> yeah. She's dead. Yep. <laughs> like, Just close her up. Close she's her up. dead. Let, close, she's over. gone. Yeah. She's gone. Well, in that scene, like in her face, also, like, like they're telling yeah. her she's dead. as she's like blinking and making noise. <laughs> right. It's like, I, sir, she appears to be alive. She's gone. She's gone. 
and her brain starts swelling. Oh, like, out of sir, the, the brain is has, swelling. Like she, has, she has a heartbeat, and he's like, call it. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's like in the corner digging a grave, and she's like, we're in the hospital. Like, he's really just like, she's done. Okay, so The our, brain swelling was real good. That was just, really ugh. cool. Yeah, was they have so to like gross. push it back into the, the cranial <laughs> with the cap, and they gotta yeah. put it back on uh, it. Uh, uh. And the guy does the thing, does he not, where he puts it up first and it's upside down and he flips it around like a little skull piece. Because they're like, drilling into it. Yeah. With the... yep. yeah. Mm. Oh, man. Okay, but at the it end of that scene. It reminded me of Tammy and the T-Rex. There was that extended did, brain yeah. surgery yeah, scene was, in Tammy and the T-Rex. Yeah, that was brutal, one. yeah. But the whole, uh, you know, because it ends with like, she's dead, she's dead, and then she wakes up, it's a dream. You're remembering the surgery. Your memory is coming mm-hmm. back. Are, is it setting up that she's an unreliable narrator? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Because okay. she clearly has like blackouts, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wh- I it's mean, a lot like butterfly effect. Like she's got to start <laughs> yeah. journaling to get her fucking blackouts under control. Especially because we're missing pieces of events that happen in this movie. Like we start a scene, things go off, and then we just cut to like back to her, but we don't know what happened to the, because there's usually another person in the scene with her. Mm-hmm. And we're like, what happened to them? Like there, it's like we're yeah. missing second halves or middles, and we see very endings of the dead person, yeah, yeah, or something that says they're dead. There's one in particular that was really like playing with the audience, where she goes up into a bell tower, yeah, with Rudy. Now, okay, yeah. Oh, so this is where I'm just like, so I and seems like this. I think she's imagining his aggression, his creepiness, and I think she does that with a few characters in this movie. Um, the glasses guy. Mm-hmm. Alfred. Alfred. Albert. I think she, Alfred. Alfred. I think she's imagining that turned up creepiness of the characters. I think that is in her head. I don't think that's makes these sense. characters that makes sense. actually doing it. Given what we really know. really fucking weird. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think yeah. because it's so weird and because it happens more than once, a few times, I think that is her seeing these things. Yeah, that because the logic in that scene doesn't check out like later on. But what we see, like, right, they go up to the bell tower. And then all of a sudden, like, okay, they're going to get busy or whatever. But then he's like, what if I was to cut the rope? And she's like, well, don't do that. He's like, but I have a knife. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so weird. It's, it's like got to be something. <laughs> it's like he's possessed by evil right. all yeah, of a sudden, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. He just, she, like, goes completely like, I have a knife. What yeah. I have a knife. It's a, it's a very, it's, it's hilarious it's, delivery. Yeah. It, it's just stupid. like one of those, like, what the, f-? and then he starts advancing on her with the knife and you're like, yeah. oh my God, like what, what is happening here? Is he trying to kill her? Is he the, mm-hmm. is he the killer? And then she fades into the darkness, which I think is probably like a, a metaphor. Yeah. And maybe. Or, and then blood hits the floor, yep. like, you know, of the church. Mm-hmm. The priest comes yeah, out to a great priest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he priest. goes to <laughs> ring the bell <laughs> and he guy. pulls the rope. The rope breaks off. Ooh, and- Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I and you know they got the right? Oh, and I then his it. next line is even better. Murder. Murder. <laughs> Help. Murder. 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 He just murder. like he sees oh blood God. and immediately murder. That's, I mean, it's not yeah. wrong. I mean, but, well, yeah. right, yeah. I'm just like yeah. if it's dripping from the ceiling and there's a cut row, I'd be like murder. So I student. appreciate that he jumps to that conclusion, not like that there's some sort of like supernatural thing happening in the Right, church. no, there's blood all over the Right, yeah. right. Christ's eyes dead. are bleeding. No, yeah. it's no, probably no, no. murder. He's like, murder. <laughs> like, thank you. A logical priest. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. Not everything is Jesus. Right. Well, the student body begins to meet suspicious ends. Mm. Who is the okay, so we've established Bernadette, right? Died, right. Bernadette strangled goes, to death. Yeah, and oh no, then stabbed. Slash, strangled then okay. slash, yeah. Who yeah. who comes up next? Oh, who's the guy with the bike? Oh. Francois. Francois. Okay, so he... Everyone has these Harry Potter school scarves. Yeah. Everybody, it's important. Yeah. Scarves it's, are... They come into play a lot. Yeah, 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 scarves are like third build in this movie. It's yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, truly, truly. <laughs> what, what was her name? Something Sue Anderson that is... Uh, uh, Virginia? Vir- yeah, Mary Sue Anderson. Oh, sorry. Melissa. Melissa Sue Anderson, oh. and then mm-hmm. Glenn Ford, and then Knit Scarves, Knit right? Scarves. Yeah. 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 The woman who crocheted all the scarves. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> seriously. Um... And he's, you know, you know, how you, you know how you wear your scarf when you work on your motorbike? You're very yeah, loose I scarf. I yeah. always very, do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, near, anything <laughs> I've ever learned from any job I've ever had where you were working on machinery, they're just like, don't wear any loose clothing. Nothing yep. loose. Or yeah. you will die. Yeah. He had his hand next to that spoke as mm-hmm. it was turning around like, Jesus, this is how people look. Because he's like, yeah. boom, boom, you know, mm-hmm. trying to fix the thing. Yep, yep, yep. And, and you can see it coming. Like as soon as like the, the figure walked into the room, you're just mm-hmm. like. 
that scarf's loose, that wheel's going, <laughs> something's going to happen. And it keeps going faster, too. Yeah, yeah. So we're mm-hmm. going to rev this up a little bit. Wasn't there a scene like this in Pet Cemetery 2? Mm. There was something know. with the bike, right? Oh, I think somebody gets the actual so, wheel in the face. Is that what it was? That's Maybe. What yeah. I think, I think so. somebody gets yeah. a wheel in the okay. face. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe the fat friend or something like that. But it's implied that his scarf gets tangled up and he increases the speed and then yeah, this yeah. was not this is a disappointing the face goes into the yeah smoke. this was disappointing not exactly Easy. what yeah, yeah. And we then, don't see anything no really. we get a, a splatter of blood on the face but the next shot which would show kind of what exactly mm-hmm. happened to him is just very close it's to the hammer and squished yeah. in yeah yeah and so we don't yeah. get too much and then this. when we see him later it's just like abrasions on his face yeah, yeah. And like, like, that's not, yeah right, exactly okay. yeah but hey so now he's dead he go um and who else uh Who's the next? Oh, uh, the uh, guy with the blonde hair. We can't forget guy with oh, yeah. hair. Oh, that's yeah. the, yeah, the good best one. one. That's a good the one. The best Not one. Not since Final Destination oh. 3 has a gym scene been so memorable. Yeah, so we're going to say, like, of, for ha- happy birthday to me, it has at least one. Two. Okay, two great slasher kills, and this is one of them. Mm-hmm. This okay, is this is a good one. one. So what yeah. happens to this unfortunate fellow? He's bench pressing a lot of weight and he keeps mm-hmm. and this guy, the killer yeah. who we only see white tennis shoes and like black but, pants. Yeah, but the killer, every time they come in, the, the person just instantly like, oh, hey, and just starts How talking are you? to him. Like it's what's one of their group. We know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though the other yeah. person never talks back. You notice that? The killer right. never talks back as this person's right. asking them all the these questions. Killer walks in and he's like, oh, hey, you know, Amelia's going to stop by. So we know it's not Amelia. Yeah. But Amelia's going to stop by mm-hmm. and she's bringing food. Hey, can you throw some more weights on the, the dumbbell for me? Yeah. <laughs> this scene. Put some more, put some more, uh, put some so he starts off putting it. ten more each on each mm-hmm. side, and he says that's a little too light. Put twenty five more each. Well, on that each was side. pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. put some twenty fives on there. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, you know where it's going, but the little details yeah. make yeah. it so much better. Yes, and and the He's, fact that, like you mentioned, it's like the slow pull of the guards. Yeah. Away. Hilarious and horrifying at the same time. I crack the yeah. fuck up. He pulls the gu- like the the rack that you set the dumbbell on. He yeah. slowly pulls it out of frame, and like to me, that almost felt like the torso moment with the key in the door like yeah you know where it's gonna end up but yeah. how it gets there is yeah. what surprises yeah. you yeah. that's what yeah. i love yeah. about yeah. these type yeah. of movies yeah. so you yeah. sit there going like no whoa, whoa, put it back put it back because <laughs> the killer i think put too much weight yes on there yeah and he's like i can't hold it up right. so he's holding this thing and if it comes down it's gonna kill him mm-hmm. and he's like i can't come on move it back <laughs> and then if the that's killer, not enough the coup de gras yeah the killer brings over another 25 pound weight and just you see where it's going. And yeah. the music is building. <laughs> yeah. like the music is in on it. Is he? Oh, it's, it's just like, hovering over his short little 80s shorts. Yes. yes. It is. And you're just like, oh, no. You're like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. Every man in the room is just like, don't do it. <laughs> Did you guys feel like a little nauseous yep. almost oh, seeing yeah. that? Yeah. yeah you see where it's going. You're yeah. like, oh, because God. I, I, uh, I don't know what the, uh, uh, we've, I think we've discussed this before, what the equivalent is. Like when you see that coming, you can feel the pain yeah. mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. in that yep. area at the mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> and he drops the weight right in this guy's crotch. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's the end. Like curtains yep. for this guy. Yep. The bar comes down on his neck. Yep. A nice blood mm-hmm. spurt. Yeah. That's it's, like a J. Lee Thompson mm-hmm. slasher yes, movie moment. That feels like something that could have been in a 10, ten to midnight. midnight. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It that got, it got very a very good. audible reaction from all of us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was, was very a, satisfying. A bravo moment. Yeah. Yeah. Very satisfied. <laughs> yeah. And see, this is the thing I think that like new slasher remakes need to understand is that we're not upset about the tropes. Just give us different ways to hit the same points, right? Because mm-hmm. right. like we knew he was going to die in this gym. And we yep. knew weights right. were going to be involved, mm-hmm. but I definitely would not have guessed weights to the crotch. <laughs> no. Like yeah. I thought he was just going to get his head smashed in. Yeah. Right. This and is all you need to do to make a slasher movie. Just mm-hmm. make slight adjustments it's like here it's and there. Elevating it through that level of like, oh, I guess in that it's like the cruelty because uh, Savini does that kind of thing. Right. It's like here, it's like it's awful. And then he takes it up a notch. And that's mm-hmm. what this felt like. It was right. like, oh, God, your arms are going to break. You know, mm-hmm. you're, this thing's going to come down. But no, it's worse. We're going to drop a weight right. on, on your balls. All. It's yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's wow. It's, I'll remember that scene mm-hmm. forever. Yeah. And then yeah. the girl, his girlfriend or, you know, at the, at for, the moment, for, at the moment <laughs> comes in and like the scene's all been cleared up. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like, I know. I was ex- been- so she's being stalked by a barbell <laughs> and yeah <laughs> i i was waiting for her to turn the lights on and see him and then we get another shot at it that's what i was hoping mm, for but uh, yeah he's mm-hmm. all gone and cleaned up no, i guess yeah. but he propped the 
dumbbell up against the not not only that, but he <laughs> added all the weights to one end. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because they were not like that. So yeah. he added all the weights to one end and then propped it up and they the 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 cleaning technique of this killer. Yeah. Top impressive. Notch. Mm-hmm. Impressive. Impressive. Yeah. Dexter could not pull this off. No, yeah. not at all. Mm-hmm. Very impressive. So um I'm trying to so Rudy, we think, has been killed. Right after the soccer match, this movie also like get, has a lot of like uh, student body work, where mm-hmm. you know we see the the BMX race, yeah. uh, yeah. we see the soccer uh, match. match. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, there's a scene where because people have been disappearing, uh, they bring uh, all the students into the the library or yep. something, and mm-hmm. they're interviewing them with the police. You know, when was the last time you saw mm-hmm. these people? Um, and I think there's a clue that's found in the garden outside during this. And so all the students a have to rush outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A misdirect clue. Oh, like Although, everything else in this movie. Okay. But, <laughs> but so. Uh, yeah, I don't know how we got there. We I, see Rudy burying something in well, the garden. Well, this is my question. Yeah. Why is, if it is what it is revealed to be, why is he burying? Right. He's playing a prank. Is is that is yeah. just the prank? But on like, who? And for I what? I don't fucking know. <laughs> just These, anybody? Okay, this group of friends pranks each other all the time, and you know what? You can get the fuck out of here with it. I'm sorry. Like, if I knew people that acted like this, I would have nothing to fucking do with them. Like, right? Just just constant fucking with each other. Always. Yeah. So you're always on edge. Time. Always. Right. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be able to live with these people. Entitled yeah. rich kids. Yeah. This is very what they true. Fucking get off on this shit. Yeah. yeah. Like torturing yeah. others. Yeah. Rudy does look very sinister when he's burying the thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh shit, I got to bury something in the rose garden. Yeah. And then when they find it, they, you know, it's like, oh my God, there's something. They found something out in the garden. That one guy comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I think they found something outside. Yeah. And the whole student body like it's rushes amazing. out to go find out what the cops have found. <laughs> oh, and it's like a scarf. And under the scarf, there's a skull and Glenn Ford is like, you know, because he's the doctor, uh-huh. even though the, the police pulled this thing up, mm-hmm. the there doctor no, there were no, runs there over. There was no CSI. There was no crime scene shit yeah. back in the no. back in this time. They're just like, yeah, sure. Touch it. Handle Excuse it. Poke me, holes inspector. In it. Like, Can I take a look at that? Oh, sure. Here you go. Yeah. 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 And it's a skull. We're like, oh, my God, somebody's dead. But it's like, no, it's his property of Crawford Science Department. Oh, uh, want one. And you're like, why the hell was he burying it there? Who was supposed to find it? What the? F-? Okay. There's another <laughs> scene that happens. Uh-huh. Only I'd like to more. remind you of that uh, Virginia and her friend Anne all of a sudden decide, hey, we need to go check on. Alfred, Alfred. Yeah. Yes. because yeah. he likes to stuff things. He's an uh, awkward guy, mm-hmm. and, but it seems like Ginny kind of likes him or doesn't. Right. And he does. It's not like he's a loner and doesn't. Do, he does participate in all the things. And he's the Be- goalie, the backup yeah. goalie, I think, because yeah. he is, had to go in yeah. there. Yeah, it's, it's because the, their friendship is solely based on their their parents' worth. Yes. Like, he's one of the top ten because his parents are that rich. Right. That's it. Right. He's he's weird. He doesn't. He's, he's still weird. He doesn't fit in with them. <laughs> right. But. Well, he's got to be one of us because his parents are as rich as ours. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. as we discuss it. I'm getting that more and more mm-hmm. that they are the top ten. Yeah. To and they top stick together just students. because of that. That's it. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's like the blue ribbon society mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, disturbing exactly. behavior. Disturbing, yeah. 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 Yep. So they go over to his house. I'm not. We weren't entirely sure why they were doing this. The scene kind of comes out of nowhere. They break yeah. in. I he think didn't, he didn't show up. Yeah, he was missing from something. Yeah, they like, were. They went somewhere. And Although didn't show once up. we get to a certain point in this movie, it's like he's been gone for twenty minutes. We should go ransack his house and see if he's yeah. home. Yeah. Like that is the feeling from these people. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't take much for them to be like, "Where's this guy? Let's go find out." And but then what, also, when people go missing, they also don't care. That, yeah, yeah, right. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. What do they find in his house? Uh, taxidermied animals. Jack okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. I mean, I can. Okay. Yep. Maybe so normal enough. Yeah. Which yeah. is fine. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sounds yep. like like you do. Yeah. Like you do. It's okay. And then uh, Bernadette's head on a tray. Oh. Bloody head, I should say. Yeah. 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 What are we? That's what, a little what, odd. What are our yeah. thoughts on this? Mm-hmm. Like, what do do you think? What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> I'm even more confused by this scene given was... the ending of the movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is this? Okay, so here's what I'm going with, okay. right? Okay, let's okay. hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, Alfred is an artiste, right? And yep. he sculpts things, and yep. he can sculpt things that are very realistic faces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he then enters into a deal with our killer 
for that, uh, mm -hmm. for like how, what we end up finding out is what's been going on mm -hmm. through the entire movie, right? Mm -hmm. What? You think he was... He entered into a deal? Yes. You think he knew? Yes. So you I think, think that he head is sculpted, real? Yeah, because he sculpts Bernadette's head. Yeah. We read it as like, oh my God, he killed her. There's her head. Then he reaches into the dummy's head and pulls out an yeah. eye. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, but is that her real head? Right, right. Because it innards. Because he in says like, oh, he was poor Bernadette, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, isn't Bernadette missing? But it's is also it like, right. she was my model. Yeah. You two can be my models. Yeah. If you'd like. Yeah. So, but again, this but is like, I don't know point. if it's her interpretation of his creepiness or, or it may be going by your theory, the creepiness is real based on yeah. his relationship with the he killer. He has a fascination with Virginia. His fascination with the dead as well. And I think he sculpted Virginia's face. So lifelike. Okay. Okay. That sure. it was but also later on with the reveal, <laughs> that's right. Oh, it, it, ha it has to, right? Yes. It has that's to. Right. It has to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I, it works for me now. <laughs> this that fucking movie. Sense. That's the reason for that whole scene that yeah, was okay. like, what the fuck is that scene right. in the movie that for? You're like, sense. oh, it's because Albert made the face. Alfred. Yeah. Alfred but made he the made face. the face for her to use. Okay, but so he is still weird, and she manipulated him. Yes, but, but he was in order to get. But he was also in on it. But he's also not really. Yes, he's still weird. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh. This okay. this makes <laughs> sense. Wow. All right. Okay. But Alfred, I'll go with that. Doesn't make it very long. I mean, in the bravo movie. for tying that together. <laughs> yeah, that was yes. okay. That was, yeah, well, that was, see, that was on this watch because I'm like, right. Hey, not only does he have her head, but he has other parts of body parts. Yeah, like Ryan right. He's a sculptor, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then by the end of the movie, where things just go batshit crazy, you're like, <laughs> what in the how? Where did that? And it's like, <sighs> oh, I think Alfred. that makes that mm -hmm. make sense. Okay. It does make sense. Okay. Having served his usefulness, however, to the right. killer, he's no longer needed. Yep. And okay, so, so he's in love with the actual killer based on how he dies. I thought he was... Oh. Uh, no, he's in love with... I thought he was in love with Virginia. Virginia. So, okay, so he, he goes thinks that's Virginia? The, I think so, because he goes okay. to the grave. Okay, that works. Right? And Virginia, I think, her back is Virginia to has never killed anyone. Right. Okay. That we know of. So she went to the graveyard to of lure her mother, him there right. to kill him. The killer is what I'm saying. I think so. Because we okay. see him approaching and there's this like super so slow. They're it milking it so out. Milking it. Yes. He reaches into his pocket with his black glove and grabs something. And then all of a sudden Virginia turns around with the clipping shears and stabs him. And we're like, what the hell just happened? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because this is our first turn and then like, oh, Virginia's Killing people. She's killed people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, how are we going to write this one off? She's the killer. We've yeah. revealed like halfway through the movie. And then we see her the next day and she's like, hey, guys, what's going on? And we're like, wait, did this scene just happen where she killed Alfred? <laughs> and then she's having these nightmares and she's telling the psychiatrist she's having blackouts. She thinks she killed Rudy. Mm -hmm. But then Rudy shows back up. He's like, ha ah, no, yeah. I was up at the bell tower with you and I cut my hand. And you don't remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. She's like, no, I don't remember that. And you're like, that's convenient. Okay. Yep. <laughs> right. So who is in the bell tower with Rudy? I think it was Virginia because she yeah, remembers being Virginia? she remembers being in the bell tower yeah. with him. Okay. So she could have still seen his creepiness as a manifestation of her yep. memory. I guess. Of her, but but what happens I, yeah, to I, his what I happens to his hand? Well, he cut it while he was cutting the rope. He yeah. explains okay. this to her later yeah. on when he reappears out of nowhere. So why would the a killer kill, why would the killer kill him, him, him at this point then? Why wouldn't they? I don't well, she he wasn't maybe, with the killer. Okay. Yeah. Maybe he just there was just an accident. She just had a blackout. But, but, but that but, doesn't but make sense she, either. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. If right, she gets right. chloroformed, there had to be yeah. there would be a reason for it. She gets she gets chloroformed? A what? couple times, folks. <laughs> Later on in a fantastic little montage. Mm, of her getting chloroformed over and What's over again. Oh, yeah. What's going on? Oh. Yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so I think uh, after, let's see. So um, we've killed everybody except for, I think, like, well, Matt Craven, Rudy, yeah. and oh, the blonde girl. Like, Matt we, Craven has the most comfortable 
scene. I was like, we have to talk about. Oh yeah, it's the it's, shish kebab scene. It's, we it's, have to. It's the scene. It's, it's, it's the, the scene. scene. It is the cover uh, because uh, again, the fluidity of the relationships yep. uh, happening here. We are eventually at a dance mm-hmm. yeah. uh, where partners are swapped subtly with like, dance. Hey, partners. go dance with my girlfriend, and I'm going to dance with her. Right. Yeah. She's freaking out. I'm like, okay. Everything. And so then she's Matt- like, that's fine. By the way, I also make delicious snacks. Do you want to come over? <laughs> <laughs> and when you think delicious snacks, we obviously. We obviously think shish kebab. Kebabs. Yeah. With sauces. I like that Holly was like, well, we have to see what she made him. And she comes out like he's in front of the roaring yeah. fire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. Set, 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 oh, this, so, yeah. This is the scene here. Yeah. The scene is, have cozy, to the scene yeah. is cozy as fuck. It's the coziest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. I loved it. I had these pillows. They were great. I laid it's, on them like this. It's yeah. beautiful. So very yeah. often. It's very beautiful. They're right in front of a fire. There's candles. It's big, cozy, yeah. like, body pillows. Yeah. Glasses big, of wine. Pillows. Yeah. yeah. Weren't they smoking, too? They were smoking, yeah. and, and, and she brings out this plate of kebabs with an assortment of sauces okay, to it, dip in. When we saw they were kebabs, oh we all God. cheered because then we knew the poster was going to yes, happen. Yeah. We were like, okay. yeah. Yeah. There's certain things we have to find out in this. Yeah. Whose fucking birthday it is? Yeah. <laughs> Which Holly was very relieved. I, I asked and, like three times. I'm like, also, whose birthday is it? Whose birthday is it? And where are the fucking shish kebabs? Yeah. These are the things we needed. We but, got them. If you think about it, weird sitting in front of the fire food. Shish kebabs. Oh, very weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not, this yeah. isn't like, but. I thought if you, she was going to have like fondue or s'mores or some shit, but right? You Shish- could still do the same thing with yeah. those. Kebabs I yeah. aren't your seduction food? No. <laughs> so pointy, you know? I have some I, tips for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> dangerous like when you feed them to the, the other person, too. Yeah. Well, I noticed she had the, the metal kebab <laughs> skewers, too. It wasn't yeah. like the wood ones. It was right, the yeah, metal yeah. ones. So, yeah. yikes. Yeah. It's sexy where you're just like rubbing meat by the side of your face. like, take a bite. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Holly knows. Then, She's got it. Yeah. He gets kebab <laughs> through the back of the throat. He it's truly awesome. does. Yeah. It, and, but the next morning Anne comes over to the house and she's like hey what happened with the hot details of you know you and uh, give Dieter. me all the gory details uh, give me yeah. all the gory, details. gory details she's like I can't I remember them but she's here like, what are you talking about yeah but yeah. here have a, a here's the keys to the house like I'm gonna take a shower why don't you come on in and in the shower she experiences I think this is the scene that like tells us like what happened right mm-hmm. we get the mom scene yeah, because I mean, oh I I do like how they well, I do like how they're relating everything that happened beforehand to each specific event that happens in the movie to yeah. trigger her trauma. Yeah. They work out pretty well, I okay. think. I think they're doing pretty good. We get the, you know, obviously the launch over the bridge which goes with the accident, the water, the mom drowns cuz she's in the shower and everything. Mm-hmm. So everything relates pretty well. But for this one, do we get is this where we go into more full scene? I think this is the full scene. This is the full scene yeah. where we get the the whole thing where the um do we go straight to party at no, this moment, it's, it's, or is this just car ride forward? Oh, that's right, because we had the car ride I think at we one had car point ride forward, and then we go back for that. So it, we see mom for the first time, <laughs> mom, and mom, what a what a Ooh. mom, yeah, what a she, character. She's like those sons of bitches. This, this is a about. real housewife of some county. Oh my yeah. god, she had a quote. I want. I saw it later, and I wanted to make it a gif, and I forgot what it was, but it's it ended with "I'm a rich woman." Did she, did she <laughs> I'm say, a rich Fuck woman you, now. I'm you a can't rich buy woman. me off. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, that's a, plus our, our made up bastards. Yeah, bastards, bastards, bastards. She's chewing the scenery, and She's I love it. Though. Doing, yeah, the most. Just, and so she makes it's a very soapy. Yeah. The way so I does. understand this, okay, there was supposed to be Virginia. It's Virginia's birthday. Yes. yes. Okay. And she had a party set up, yep. right? Yep. And all of these rich kids were invited mm-hmm. to her party. Yeah. Six of the top ten. Yep. However, none of them show up. Mom is very This made upset. me very sad. It, I, it's a little... Too sad. It's, yeah. it's, well, that's, it's edging I think that's into problem. that territory. I think yeah. that's the problem. I was too sad for her at yes. this point. Like, yeah. I was just like, oh, I really kind of like felt like it's like oh, I don't, I don't like these situations that when when these happen to people in movies. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it may have been a little too sad because that's lifetime trauma there. Yeah. 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 No one showed like, up at my birthday party. Then I just, especially like I think of my kid. I'm just like, what if it's just nobody showed up? To right. Ugh. Well, how come nobody mm-hmm. showed up to the birthday party? There was another party. It was Anne's party. It was Anne's party that mm-hmm. everyone else went to that night. That was happening on the same day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because, and so then, so. Uh, I hate that this is all making more sense yeah. as we talk and about it. And mom is it. like, really well, <laughs> fuck them. We're going to go over there and you're going to be, how come you weren't invited? And she's like, they don't even, I'm not in with their class or whatever. Yeah, she's they, like, they don't, don't even, know 
they me. don't even know me. Yeah. I was like, oh, they see? fucking yeah. will. She- <laughs> <laughs> mom, it's so much drama with mom. Yep. I, I, I kind of love her. Yeah. She I marches up her. to the gate of that estate and she's like, let us in. God damn it. Do you know who this yeah. is? In the pouring rain. Yep. Pouring rain. Oh. Lightning yeah. flashes and the guard comes up and says something to the effect of like, all that stuff is behind us now. Right. Yeah. And you're not welcome here. Yeah, you'll never be one of us. Yeah. And she's like, uh, and she's yelling at the, uh, the father. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Anne's Anne's father. Yeah. 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 Which, yes. That's key. That's key. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and she's yelling things. She's like, I'm a rich. This is where we get that. Yeah. I'm a rich woman now. You can't buy me off again yeah. or this time. Yeah. Yep. And we're just like, what? What's and going then on? then apparently they got in a car. Mom was all drunk and she tried to drive across that bridge and yep. the gate opened. Mm hmm. The drawbridge opened, yep. mm-hmm. and, and they then, plunged and <laughs> into the three river times. multiple times. Oh, yeah. I think four times, three yeah. times the correct way. The fourth time, they redid yeah. the stunt. The car seemed to have flipped. Yeah, it seemed to end up the uh, right way. Very <laughs> weird. But this is yep into and, the river. But, but also, this stresses me out. I, mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm glad they showed it three times because get your money's worth. But also, yeah, I, sure. I, like the stress impact on me. I did not yeah. need to see it three times. Yeah, because yeah. not only just going to the water, but just like completely upside down. Yeah, right? oof, oof, boy, oof, yeah. yeah. I instantly started breathing heavier. I was like, yeah, because <sighs> yeah, the water's you right want to, <laughs> right, because you want to take the breaths for them. Yeah, at this point. I'm like, I can breathe. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Oh my god, everything's fine. Scenes where actors are in a thing that's filling up with water, and those scenes where they're like putting their mouth up to the roof of it, yeah. I could never I film anything it. like that. How do you not film something like that and not have a full on panic attack? Like, I mean, you just gotta trust that there's a guy two feet from you. Yeah, trust yes. breathing I don't trust him, dude. To save you in a post rust shooting world, it's like I hope we are all. T- Taking extra precautions because it's yeah. oh boy, Seriously. water stunts seem like really yeah. dangerous. But a, an extensive scene of them in the car underwater. I was right. surprised how long but this went for. When when the daughter gets out, mom's like, "Get out!" She's stuck yeah. somehow, and so she's like, "You take a deep breath and go swim." Mm-hmm. She hits her head on a passing cargo uh, barge, right, and possibly the propeller. And then we're like, "Oh, that's why she needed the brain surgery." Yeah. yeah. And so she's been out of school for four years, yep. and now she's in school, and all of these kids are her friends. She's yeah, in yeah, the top because, ten. Right, because the mom has, re, uh, has remarried married, or married yeah. mm-hmm. rich, and now she's able, for that reason, to get her daughter back into the school because of money. Yeah, because mm-hmm. remember, they lived in that little cottage before. Right. right. Yeah. Right. And she, dad called and like oh i can't make it to the party right. it wasn't the dad we thought it was right. so but is it no you'd say this different is, dad really so i, I thought so. that was the okay. same dad but then i was like where's his uh, other daughter Anne? because hmm. it doesn't make any sense she lives with her dad and he's like what have i done to you you know like i put to put you through all this it's like he took care of her after mom was out of the picture mm-hmm. right mm-hmm Oh, that is the same dad. Yeah, it's the same dad. Right, but that's not Anne's dad. Right. It is. It's Anne's dad. Not her dad. It is. It's not. I mean, like, she couldn't be. Flips out. The dad that raised her. The dad that raised her is not Anne's dad. I think it is. It's not. It can't be. Not according to the story. The dialogue says it is because, okay, so we're going to get to the shocking ending (laughs) of this movie. Glenn Ford does try to intercede at some point here, and then he gets gets killed. Brains. brains uh, (laughs) No, his entire body is drained of blood (laughs) from one hit to the head is what happens to Glenn Ford. over the walls and everything. It's like, oh, my God. And he is gone. (laughs) This is the scene, I think, that- He pops like a balloon. He does. He really does. Yeah. He, it's it's uh, it's ready or not. Spoilers yeah, for that, yeah. It's ready or not. There was uh, people on the set said Jay Lee Thompson was just like blood happy and he was throwing blood around. It's <laughs> getting all over the camera and everything. Good, I'm like, yeah. it was this scene Uh-oh. where it's just like way too bloody. And I um, just forgot to do the build up towards the yeah. full display. All right, fair so enough. Dad comes yeah, yeah. home from this trip because he's a world traveler. He has to go put out a fire on a cargo ship yeah, somewhere. Yeah. He comes back and he's like, oh my god, where's my daughter? He thinks his daughter's dead. And then he goes out to the, the cottage, yes. yeah. right? And on the way, he passes Lisa Lang Lois, who's standing there, like dumbstruck with a present. And we're like, what does that have to do with anything? She's the only one who survived. She's a friend. Yeah. She's just standing there. Right, okay, yeah, you forgot about yeah. that one, because it, like, it, no, it doesn't make I didn't it. forget, I just don't understand. I don't know, it she's just standing there going anything. like, oh my god, he, like shell-shocked or something, I'm like, okay. Yeah. And so he goes into the cottage. In the cottage, he finds the carnage, 
the birthday party is taking mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. All the dead kids, these top tens, are seated around the table. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I it's like good, it. Yeah, Along mummified. They all have their you know yeah. guts Along hanging out the, and all uh, this. The corpse, the mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the mom. The corpse of mom. Because that's right. He does Covered stumble in into her grave yeah. Yeah. at some point on the way yeah, yeah, as yeah. he's getting whipped by every branch. Yeah, she looks, trying to get there. Man, her corpse is, looks good. Like the the money went towards effects. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it really pays off. And so then, as we sit here going like, okay, what's happening? Melissa what's Sue that? Anderson comes out with a birthday cake singing happy birthday to me. Yeah. And he's like, oh, my God, what what have I done to, your, to, to you? And he sits down. He's all grief stricken. And she stabs him in the throat. And we're like, this doesn't resolve anything. What the no. hell? Yeah. Nope. No, because doesn't. beforehand, uh, like 30 seconds beforehand, it's like you kept your promise. I thought he was safe. Because yeah. he showed up. He showed up at the like, birthday party. Came. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no one's safe. And then, so it's like, then. this is a shocking ending. We're like, whoa. There's, what there's the? one person with their head down on the table that yeah. we don't see. Because I assumed it was Anne. Yeah. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. Because did too. Anne appears at one point floating dead in a bathtub, but then she's gone and some she's other yeah. character is there. And we're like, did Anne get killed? Yeah. No, so pull up the head of this person who's you know in the face down on the table, mm-hmm. and it's Ginny. Ginny. And we're like, how could Ginny be two people? Right? <laughs> is it twins? Uh, Fucking how, twins! Right? Yep. And this is where at this moment I asked the audience, which is Holly McCann, like, how do you feel right now? Because they combined our both of our like they, yeah, right. biggest the fear of twins and the fear of two, the two monsters, monsters at yeah. the end. I'm There's like, oh my secret, god, everything's happening right it's a now. Secret second twin monster. It's awful. Just like, oh my and god. I was like, oh, this, this is going? Going? We fucked so <laughs> we're what? in Dude. shock. Because yeah. we're like, she is saying like. My sister, you yeah. always got yes. the whatever. Yeah. But nothing, nothing previous to this moment has has even hinted at there being twins. Right. Nothing. No, right. but the, the, the scene at the gate with the mom does actually hint at what's going on. How here. so? How? Because she's there and... She, what she she's like my daughter deserves to be at that birthday party because she is the sister of the birthday girl mm. and the guy okay. won't acknowledge her or she her say daughter. That. She doesn't say, she that. say it. That. But the the guy at the gate says something to the there effect is, of like that's all about and she's like I'm you, you can't buy me off I'm rich right. now. Well, we have no idea what any of this means until right. we get to later right. on. Yes, right. But that's what it meant. Right. Like in hindsight, oh, yeah, yeah. so. It turns out, like, so then she's like, you know, uh, the killer, Ginny, is going to kill the Ginny in the chair. Yeah. And they get into a fight, and Ginny reaches up and grabs her face and pulls it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't processed the twin information. I'm no. We're, given we're, yeah, we're still processing yeah. that shit. Yeah. And then this yeah. happens, and we're like, what is going on? Yeah. Right. It's a twin. Just kidding. <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. It's. It's a, Anne. It's Anne, a character who we've seen this whole movie. And she's like, been the friend of Ginny the whole movie. Right. I was, yeah. But and now it's like, surprise, she's the killer. And we're like, but why? Why? And why? It takes a How? while to get to the why. Yeah. She might have talked about other stuff for a long time before yep. we get to the why. Right. I had, I had because we were given so little, uh, because we're missing parts within this movie about, uh, with uh, Virginia, like getting into situations, a big gap where we don't know what happened and then we see the aftermath. I'm like, if we keep doing this, we got to get to an end at a certain point where this stuff is revealed. Mm-hmm. Has to be to fill in the gaps of the story. Hopefully, if this is a, a movie that is competent and can do that, it'll give us that. It does. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get to the end. So what's so, happening? So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, a lot of chloroform. Just a lot of chloroform. Like, again, uh, we get a killer going into a monologue. I feel like I was chloroform. Yeah. I, I was just like, wait, what? And, like, we're waking up going, what happened? Uh, I do love a killer monologue. Um, but this one is just, so we go back to the certain situations we've been in. We see some events, and then we see that just, you know, white cloth over the face. White cloth over the face. So it's basically every moment that Ginny has been in a situation with one of the victims. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anne has been chloroforming her, like reaching out of nowhere yes. and chloroforming right. her. This, this is why she exhausting. has blackouts. And then Anne has been assuming Ginny's identity with a yes. mask. And that's why all the killers, or, you know, the victims right. know her. Yes. And then she kills them. Yes. And the motive is because Virginia is the illegitimate daughter of Anne's dad. And she. Anne's took- dad had a mistress, which was. 
Virginia's mother. But at what point did like the focus shift to Ginny and now everybody loves Ginny and like I'm going to kill. And how I, long has Anne known this? Anne has known this forever because she he... like intentionally became okay. Ginny's best okay. friend when to, she came right. back to the school. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I hate okay, that I'm this following movie so far. is making me want to rewatch it just to. Now this there is a, there's a shot that I, I paid okay. attention to this time at the bridge scene. The first one when the okay. kids all go over the bridge, uh-huh. and Jenny goes riding off, or running off, and there's a hold on Anne mm-hmm. looking. Yeah, okay. and she's and, like, uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like and this. Anne is with her when they go. Well, it's Anne's idea to go check on Alfred. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so there's that whole situation. So Anne knew who Alfred and was like, you're going to make a Ginny mask for me. Then right. she killed him. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that doesn't get out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. All so right. who killed together. Bernadette and why? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Before you said that, before you said that, I was going to say, so it all makes sense. But does it? <laughs> but, but it doesn't in a ridiculous way, but also, okay, Bernadette. So all right, let's say that it was Anne. It was Anne. Okay. It had to be. Had to be. And it had to have something to do with the fact that, like, eventually Bernadette was going to end up at a, at, a, at a birthday party or, like, like. But also, okay, here's. Ginny the, more than her or something. Here, I don't know. Like, they're all friends. Okay, I don't now, get it. I, I, I want to <laughs> posit something. Okay. Because throughout all of this, we're, we're, we're saying that Alfred was involved somehow. He at least made the mask. Right, yeah, but he's yeah. also creepy. I'm just putting in so much work to make this. <laughs> right but also, I, I want to throw out there that maybe Alfred killed Bernadette, based solely on what the killer was wearing when it happened, because she, the killer is wearing the exact outfit Alfred is wearing. She looked up at them. Up, she taller. Looked, she looked up at the killer. Yes, hmm. I think that kill is Alfred, because I think and so. He actually does have her head. I think so. And then, I'm going to agree with you on okay, that. Okay, so, so that is her head, and he's like, huh, look at this. It's actually a fake one. <laughs> right, and I think the eyeball like, thing is, it, a, is a trick to make them think it's fake, and I think that's her real head, because he is in the middle of sculpting many things, yeah. Okay. and I think that's him, because he's got the <laughs> same, the, the killer has the same jacket, the same scarf, although everyone has the same scarf, but the same jacket. I, I think it's Alfred. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that. And I don't think you can argue with it too much based on the like, prove me wrong. Right, I was gonna say, like I know the burden of proof is not necessarily on you, but I think that's what happened for just for that. I think Alfred is like the ki- the the accomplice you have that you kill off. Uh, uh, watch a few movies, take a few notes. Uh, uh, have, you know, uh, have a partner to sell out in case you get caught. Find someone to frame. Like I think these are the things that happen. And I think that's what happened. I think it's Alfred. And again, you, you shrug because I don't think I you got any. Well, I can't, I can't, I there's no way I can link uh, Anne to Bernadette's death. Right. Mm-hmm. My head hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. The yeah. end of the movie is basically a tussle between the two sisters, and mm. uh, Virginia stabs the attacker, the killer, and yeah. with the birthday carving, birthday cake carving knife. Yeah. And then the police inspector arrives and goes, oh, my God, what have you done? And there is uh, Virginia standing there with the bloody knife and all of these dead corpses. Or, yep. And then it goes to black. Well, well no, <laughs> stand there with all the corpses. And then you hear. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday to me. And they cut at the moment they should have cut to black yeah. because you get that <laughs> happy birthday cut to black. To me, it's, it's, good. it's good. It's good. It's good. As an it's editor, good. I like it. I just want to point out that, like, while talking about this, at first I had to take my sweater off, and then I had to put <laughs> my just, hair uh, up. I'm like, this movie. If we is, talk for another half like, hour, am, Holly, where are I you going to be? Losing my goddamn mind. <laughs> She's just like, there's so much heat. <laughs> so much heat. I can't fucking take it anymore. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe we should find out what Holly and Sean and Michaela all thought of this movie. By the end, I'm gonna be chain smoking while yeah. we're sitting there. <laughs> and Guys, would they I don't know what happened. would they recommend it to you? Well, stick with us, listener. We're gonna answer that question and more. But first, we're gonna read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Somebody peel his face off. <laughs> yeah, I want to know who that is. You just is. have like a mission. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just more Igor. Is it, okay, yeah. more Igor. Is it? Yeah. No, it's in. Uh, we're going to peel it off. 
and it's going to be Lurch. <laughs> Colin oh, so gets he's it. Tall. And that's very funny. Oh, okay. Um, well, okay. Lurch did the first killing, and then it was Igor. There you go. Uh, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. On X. At Set Freak Show. I said Twitter, damn it. <laughs> they can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night uh, and Threads at Saturday Night <laughs> Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Happy Birthday to Me, Travis Legler writes in and says, A Little House on the Prairie Star and the original Jonathan Kent in a slasher movie from the Golden Age. I've always <laughs> seen the picture for this, yep. the poster with the shish kebab skewer going into the guy's mouth, but I haven't seen the movie. I'm ready for you guys to spoil it for me. Okay. Well, there we go. We definitely I don't know if we can. My my sixth grade teacher made us watch reruns of Little House on the Prairie. Yeah, I feel like that was a form of torture. Mm-hmm. Is it just on days where there's just like nothing to do. No, it was like, like a routine. Or he also purposeful. made he also made us listen to Paul Harvey radio shows. Oh oh oh. oh. Okay. He was, he was old school. I was mm-hmm. gonna say interesting. Nice fella. guy though. Sure. Farmer. Just has weird percl- <laughs> <laughs> weird proclivities. Okay. He still remembers me. My parents ran into him not that long ago. <laughs> Uh, well, Mark Harrison writes in and says, uh, happy birthday to me is very much like urban legend. And anyone think this birdie- birthday party trumps all birthday parties they've ever been to? Uh, truly, truly. Except for the black mm, yeah. and white cake, black and white cat. <laughs> uh, say that's a pretty high. That was one. a good one. Yeah. Yeah, there is. It, yeah, there, uh, urban legend does yeah. feel like that. Well, only only in the way where, there, it, where it's a little complex how we got oh, to yeah. things. Right. Yeah. That I makes sense. That. But you got to But there's a journey to get there. All right. Um, last week we watched a movie called Backdraft, and oh, about yeah. that movie, Michael Whitaker writes in. Oh, because I called um, Ron Howard Opie Cunningham, yeah, yeah. Richie Cunningham, and he says Opie Cunningham was a joke when he hosted Saturday Night, L- Night Live back in the eighties. I think <laughs> Eddie Murphy was doing an interview thing with him and kept calling him that. I knew I'd heard that's that so before. Okay, that's pretty funny. <clears throat> Opie, from, Eddie Murphy uh, would do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey Blythe says, having a firefighter for a father, I think you might, in, uh, he's talking to Holly here, uh, having a firefighter for a father, I think you might enjoy the Netflix stand-up Rachel Feinstein, big guy. It's mostly about her husband oh, yeah, being her a, husband's firefighter. a firefighter. Oh, yeah, you might, yeah, watch that one. She's, she's funny, so I would watch that. I'm gonna, I'll go watch it. I'm curious. Hmm. Uh, Mike Kling says, I don't think Robert De Niro gets enough love for this, this movie. I agree. He was great. He's great. In yeah, that he's movie. good. He's really good. I'm, he's I'm good in everything that he's in. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know. But I mean, yeah, but I mean. He always just, plays Robert De Niro. But he's, yeah, he's what, a, what? His, uh, I don't know. His his attitude is just fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, because his sarcasm when he's talking yeah. to yeah, all of yeah, them yeah, and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. it really, yeah. He's like, I don't give a he's fuck. I'm trying that, to do this. He's always got a paper bag, but it's always yeah. something different inside. Like, it's like great. But it's really like his Copland role. Have you seen Copland? Yeah. Because isn't he doing like. A lot of sandwich work in yes. that, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah pro, just minor he's prop just, work. I love it's, it. He's so casual. It's the yeah. casualness that's really great. No, I love it when they bring in this stuff like, well, they're humans. They, they're going to eat, and they're yeah. going to eat at times when they find convenient for them, and it's just going to pop into the movie. Like, just like, it's good. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called In a Violent Nature, and Steve Carney yeah. says, All the walking reminded me of the endless lingering shots of nature in The Revenant, and it got on my oh. nerves. <laughs> that scene. <laughs> Uh, the key mm-hmm. kill scene was impressive, but there's nothing else. The slasher classics are that for a reason. They felt this felt like a boring, cheap art house horror movie. I'm all for familiarity and reusing tropes, but this brought nothing new except that scene. And then you're left with not- nothing else. The campfire story scene was done much better in Madman too. Uh, did we do Madman? No, on we show? did. We, no, no, we no. did. I Madman. Yeah, yeah. but not Madman. Mad Mad no. uh, Madman Mars. No. Yeah, yeah. no, I'll I'll agree with this. The more I thought about um, in a violent entry afterwards, the more I agree with. I think Colin said, or uh, we, I think we all said at a certain point, it's just. It is just the same movie from a different perspective. Yeah, we're not. Decon- it's not a I don't think we're deconstructing yeah. anything. I think we're just doing the movie from a different perspective. I, I I keep going back to what you said, Sean, about the problem. Its biggest problem is that it's just not satisfying, and that's what it is for me. Is it's right. not sad. It's not a satisfying movie. Yeah, so. it, it truly yeah it isn't. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I've, I've I think I've come down a little bit more on that movie mm-hmm. even since we. Mm-hmm. It's divisive. It. Yeah, I say so, but I don't think we're deconstructing too no. much in that movie. And since we did a impromptu freak show field trip to go see that movie, Novato Judoka says, so freak show field trip to, for long legs, right? 
spoil us with your finger on the pulse review. I am tempted because uh, yeah, we like, are all very excited for that movie. I so. am yeah. having no nothing about it. I think I've heard Nicolas Cage's voice a little bit. Yeah, and I've seen Micah Monroe hold a gun and be mm-hmm. an FBI agent, and that's all I know that's about this movie. That's all you need to know. Yeah. So I'm down for it. Mm-hmm. So maybe I think so. that's all the trailer gives you, and it heightens that sense of intrigue. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't know. I mean, I no idea. A FBI agent and a serial killer. Yep. But we're, we, uh, we are, how blessed are we that we have Maxine and then the next week we have Long Legs? Oh yeah. my God. Oh, oh my yes. God. This summer's going to rock. I know. <laughs> we might be doing a lot of field trips, man. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to go around the table. And oh, thank you very much, all of you, for writing in. Thank Seriously, you. Yes. we yeah, appreciate, really appreciate it. it. We appreciate it. We love you. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Happy Birthday to Me, starting with... Holly. Me. <laughs> what did you think about Happy Birthday to Me? Um, this was an ordeal. <laughs> I am exhausted. <laughs> I am fucking exhausted. You get a good night's sleep tonight. I, I hope so. I don't know. I think it's going to keep me up just <laughs> thinking about all of the... the I can't put this. Don't movie chloroform together. me. Oh, I can't. Uh, yeah, chloroform <laughs> me. That's the only way I'm going to sleep tonight. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Just, all right. I can do it multiple times. We can turn it into a montage. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Okay. Um. Oh, I. I. Oh. I can't wrap my head around this movie. It's. It's confusing. It. I, like I, I, I. We did a lot of work making this movie make sense. And that's just mostly speculation and theory. It's not like we actually like figured it out. I think we just are putting our own twist on right. it. I think but I think we did the best anybody it. could do. I agree. I agree. I'm not sure anyone could do any better. But also, I, n- I was never bored watching this because I couldn't fucking figure it out <laughs> ever. There were so many red herrings. And I thought they were all stupid. But it was just weird I, I don't even know how to describe what this movie did to my mind. <laughs> I'm I'm at a loss, but it was entertaining. And there's some decent kills, decent effects. A lot of it makes me really angry, and I don't want to <laughs> recommend it, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I feel like you should watch it. I feel like you should experience it. I would really, really love our listeners to write in and tell us yeah. your red string theories to see if we align or if yeah. you've got some new ideas. If anyone has seen this, please tell us if we're wrong and you've seen something different in the menagerie of shit that they tried to <laughs> weave together in this movie because it makes no fucking sense. But does it make all the sense? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying. No, it doesn't. But also... It was fun. <laughs> I don't know. I like. I, I hate it. I edge, hate it so much. <laughs> edge of your seat. Couldn't guess what was going to happen next. I no. Literally, like we all leaned forward at several points. Like we like, literally ah. leaned forward. We audibly reacted to this movie. Those are the reasons that we recommend movies, right? Like it keeps you guessing. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. No fucking idea what's going on. So I'm gonna recommend it, but I also fucking hate it. <laughs> I, that's all. I. I don't know. Uh. I, that's all I can really say about it. That's it. Yeah, Colin. <laughs> I've had a difficult relationship with this movie. Yeah, the first time too. that you I too. saw yeah. it, I think, uh, you know, I mean, you have like an expectation and it didn't play out like a slasher movie, mm. which is what I was hoping for. And then to me, the first time I saw it, the ending just bewildered me because I was like, wait a second, was that girl and in the rest of the movie? I don't know. Like My brain just was not, you know, it was all over the place. And it was confusing. It felt like it doesn't pass the drive-in test where, you know, like you have to pay attention to this movie. Mm -hmm. And even then it's not entirely, I mean, I guess you do. Cause you have to pay attention on this watch. Right. You have to, that's the thing. You have to pay attention. It's still not going to make sense. But But see, I actually, it made more sense to me tonight watching it. I'm like, Oh, Oh, okay. I mean, it's, it's like abstract, but uh-huh. when you sit there, you're like, okay, I guess, yeah, the motive. Okay, I see, understand. Uh, like I said, maybe somebody else killed Bernadette. That's the one. We'll I, never have. I'm never going to. We'll never know 100. percent I can't understand that one, and I don't know why the one girl was standing there with a birthday 
gift yeah. out in the rain that's never Why? explained. Why? It's just it's, like, it, like maybe if the people had gotten like invitations to a birthday party at a certain point within the movie, yeah, that would make more sense. Is it the idea that she went in there, saw all the horror, and backed out? And she's so traumatized. I think that's she's it. just standing there, and he shows up. The dad's well, like, "What?" I you think know? that's it. But nothing yeah. makes sense as to why she would go there. Right. Yeah. Again, you are writing this movie. Yeah. Like it's it's unnecessarily like convoluted. Nature, you are writing the parts <laughs> that we don't see in your head to make the movie something. Yep. It's uh, but it's not happening all the time. I don't think. I don't know. We'll get to my wrap up. Well, it's unbelievably complicated. <laughs> um, the uh, the actual production of the movie is like very it's well very done. Good. Yeah. It's it very is. good. Um, the slasher kills, which I don't think helps Holly because she's like, if it was made bad, yeah, I could exactly. I could not recommend. But no, this, this movie. is like but it's made, made well. very like, well. There's several moments where we're all like, that was a good shot. Like, yeah, that's, camera that's, work. That's yeah, a cool transition. Right Ooh, like, it's it's. <laughs> Um, Why is it competently made in that aspect? On this watch, I watched Holly's it leaving. as, because I think the first time I was like, okay, you're looking at it for it being a slasher movie and it's disappointing you, but watching it as a giallo, I'm like, oh, this is, this is a giallo plot. It's got the weird science experiments. The only thing that's really missing is the like psychosexual disturbance you know yeah. in the killer that you know in yeah, this one she's got the psychological damage but it's not sexually related this group of friends is completely incestuous yeah there's yeah. no right. sex right yeah. it's weird right yeah it's, weird. i don't know if it's implied but yeah there's no sex scene well there's the one that almost i guess in front of the fire but like that's, that's about as close no, as we get we don't even get and no one even takes on, they don't even take off an article of clothing. Yeah, so maybe they are just going out at night and they, they kiss each other, and then the next night they're kissing somebody else. And uh, yeah, night, yeah, night. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I was down for it. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but by the time this movie got to its batshit conclusion tonight, <laughs> it was a bring the house down kind of like, oh my god, what the f holy yep, shit! Yep. And I think, yeah, in hindsight. Now, after having just watched it, I'm like, I think I would recommend actually happy birthday to me. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's an outlier in the, the, the 80s slasher movie genre, but I love those. And I kind of, I love this, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed it. So I would recommend it. <laughs> Sean, what do you think? Uh, I am going to recommend this movie. For a few reasons. One, because it did get audible reactions out of us. Mm -hmm. And for a group of people who have seen a lot of movies, for a movie to do that, got to give it credit for that. Got to respect it for that. Because the effects work, I think, is pretty great. I think the camera work is pretty great. I think after, and it took some discussion, but I think we got to a place, ex <laughs> quote unquote, explaining this movie where certain things made more sense, certain things made less sense, but all in all, overall, I, you think you got I think it overall. Yeah. I think overall, yeah, I got it. There's a few things that are a little weird, but I think overall you can get it. Um, but also like but only because we filled in the fucking blank. But I think, like, but like if you're if you're gonna, but I also like that's the fun I have with it sometimes. Like it's just to sit there and work on a movie. I, I already like, recommended it. Right there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but to sit there and like work on a movie like this and to come to the conclusions that we've come to and maybe build more story to it. Like I mean, I maybe just be talking about the podcast, but it's fun to do that for movies like this. And so. Uh, I mean, that's helpful, but also, like, again, n n I was never bored. I was always wondering what was going on, even if, if it didn't make sense at the time. Something came together maybe later on. I mean, at, at, at a moment where the main character, who we think is twins, reaches up and pulls the face off another character <laughs> for a revelation, like, oh, holy shit moments in this movie. Um, I, I, th I think it, I think it deserves your time. And I, yeah, it's one of those movies where it's just like, I, I, I would watch it again, be just for the fun of trying to figure out Anne throughout the entire thing. So I'll watch this movie again, just cause I want to see that mm. because I want to, I want to make sure I want to check on something or see if it makes sense. See if they're being honest with us because maybe they're not in some parts, but they are in others. Um, yeah. I think the I, filmmakers forgot. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> right, what if I told you that there oh. is a story online that somebody found an original draft screenplay and in the end it was actually 
Jenny was the killer, okay. possessed by the mom. Okay. <laughs> I'm into that. Okay. Oh, what, is it? what is this, mausoleum? Yeah, what, yeah what? but yeah. apparently, the but as they were making the movie, they're like... You know, Melissa Sue Anderson's performance was so sympathetic that they like they we didn't want to sacrifice that, <laughs> and so they wrote a new ending. Okay. This is a legend. I don't know right. if that's true, but it does feel like the ending comes out of the blue. Yeah, it does. <laughs> right. it does. Yeah. Oh man, there's there's so much to this movie. And like, yeah, I'm gonna recommend it I, because uh, because I enjoyed it. I think you'll enjoy it, but also because I want more people to see it so I can talk about it with there, them and discuss yeah. and see what they feel and if they're just like. Right, that happens. It's just like, yeah, I think that's it. And it's like, okay, because this is. I think movies like this, you can form a community around, and I, and I think that is what's great about this movie. What's great about horror movies, and I think it's because of that, the, the weirdness of the uniqueness, uh, and you know what you can do in movies like this that you can't do in other stuff. That uh, I have to respect it. So I recommend Happy Birthday to Me uh, for that reason. I I, I think it's. Because uh, we love a cult vibe. I th- yeah, I th- we love that stuff, and I think this just adds to that, and I'm, I'm more than happy to add this to that. Um, uh, for the greater good, I think, for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to recommend it. Michaela, take us home. Uh, yeah, Is it Colin, a happy birthday to you? Uh, yeah, I, how do you feel? I, you happy? I agreed with a lot of what Colin said. I think I was never bored because I was trying so hard to put this goddamn puzzle together. <laughs> you know, right? so there was no room to be bored. It's like because trying to put that fucking skull cap back into the thing. Just, like, <laughs> just oh, when I got like border pieces done, it was like someone threw a bunch more pieces on the table and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. You're like, there's it. no yeah. red in this yeah, puzzle. Exactly. Why is this here? Right. Like the... The bell tower scene, didn't expect that. That really... I really hung up on that scene for a long time. Mm-hmm. But... Mm-hmm. Um, I can't really say I've seen anything quite like it, right. you know, and I, I do go into these like 80s slasher like gems, just assuming they're all going to be Halloween ripoffs. And I'm fine with that because I can watch that forever. So when they're like, I'm already like grading on bag. a curve. Great. I'm grading on a curve. Right. Okay. So like <laughs> But I do appreciate that this one tried some new weird shit, even if it didn't work and didn't make any sense. At least they tried something and didn't just make a Halloween ripoff. Mm -hmm. So that I have to respect. So, yeah, I mean, I got to recommend it. But, yeah, um, I definitely feel like I'm going to have to rewatch it, too, just from having the knowledge I know now. Right. Um, I am curious if other cuts of this movie exist too, you know, mm-hmm. um, that make more or less sense. But they, um, this is why they have commentaries by editors, right? Like, exactly what, what for movies do? like this. Yeah. Is there, um, is there special features on this? It didn't look like not on this one. There is a, uh, I think there's a different release of this. Yeah, but I don't there's know. There's like if a version that has different music on it. I think right. for is several there, okay. years, mm-hmm. and they changed that. But yep. you know, interesting. Mm-hmm. Do, but yeah, your, do your research. For recommend us. it. It was a good time. Yeah. I, I almost never regret digging up some 80s slasher movie that's been forgotten about, you know. So uh, I'm into it. I, I, I'm glad that I got to see the scene that made the poster. Yep. yep. I can, <laughs> if nothing else, I we can saw close it. that loop now. There I'm done, you yep, know. Next chapter. Yep. All right. Well, you know what that Michaela's means. Michaela's closing loops. Closing loops. <laughs> and that's a Saturday Night Freak Ooh. Show Universal yep. recommend. And so, so you have to watch it by listening to the and show. Then tell us what you thought. You have to watch it. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, thank you for sticking with us next week. Uh, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin, what are we going to watch next week? Well, I am. it's summertime, and I'm, oh. I'm still in a slasher movie kind of oh, okay. mood, but I think we need a new beginning. And we're going to watch oh. one of the most controversial slasher films, I think, ever made. Friday the 13th, a new beginning? And it's Friday the 13th, part five. <laughs> oh, shit. Beginning. Oh, shit. Colin's bringing it. All right. Wow. Okay, all right. There you go, there you all go. right. I, wow. Well, I already have thoughts. One. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah, we this, haven't done this, that one this yet. Needs so, yep. yeah. This needs to be brought. This needs to be brought. All, All right. right. So uh, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.